Hey guys, Ash here from Cusbobber.com and uh, I've been on YouTube for about a year and a half now. So apart from product reviews and uh, comparison videos, I do a lot of routing tutorials, unrooting tutorials, uh, modifications, custom ROM installation videos, reviews and so on. Uh, some of the most asked questions to me are what is routing, what are the advantages of routing, can this break my device, what happens to warranty when your phone is rooted. So, you know, uh, for a long time I've been making, meaning to uh, make a video to explain, uh, you know, answer all these questions and guess that's what this video is. So, first off, let's start with what's rooting. Let me start with an analogy. Again, this is not meant to be 100% precise, just to give you guys, you know, an understanding of what we're dealing with. So, I'm sure you'll be familiar with the Windows operating system for your PC or laptop. So with the Windows operating system, you've got the guest user and you've got an administrator. Or you can also create standard user profiles as well. So Android, kind of the Android that you get is like using the standard profile on a Windows 8 uh, laptop or desktop. Uh, so with a standard profile, you can still install apps as in run software programs, but you cannot play around with Windows itself. You cannot edit the host file. You cannot, uh, you know, make changes to the Windows folder in itself. So there are a lot of functionality that is cut off. So on your Android phone, you do not have access to the, administra uh, the administrator level functions. You can only use the standard user functions, like you can install apps, but not play around with the Windows folder, or in, the, in Android's case, the root folder. You cannot make any changes to the system folder. So with root access, you can go ahead, you know, edit all this stuff, make changes, you know, there are a lot of mods and so on. And let's take a look at a few. Uh, I will give you examples on what exactly you can do. So again, to be really, really cheesy here and quote from Spider-Man of, um, you know, of all things, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So yeah, there are a lot of positives when it comes to routing, but there are some negatives as well. And again, we'll get to that in a bit. So the first and most important thing, in my opinion, when it comes to rooting a phone is software, all right? So basically, when it comes to Android, every manufacturer, this is how it works, okay? Samsung, HTC, Sony, any manufacturer selling you an Android phone is not gonna be selling you a phone with just Android on it. Every manufacturer have their own custom UI, a custom layer of their own software above Android. Why do manufacturers do this? Well, the reason they do it is because of customer loyalty, among other things. That's one of the ma major reasons. Say, for example, if you, own, if you own a Galaxy S3 today and you want to pick up a new phone, you have a lot of options, the Xperia Z, the Galaxy S4, the HTC One. But as a Galaxy S3 user, the S4 offers you a similar experience. You know, with touch with, swipe right on a contact to call, swipe left to message, pick up your phone, uh, you know, and dial the contact directly and so on. Similarly, for somebody looking to upgrade from an HTC One X, they might prefer the HTC One over the Galaxy S4. So why? Because of the user experience. The uh, HTC offers its own custom UI called Sense. Samsung offers TouchWiz. Sony has its Xperia UI and so on. So apart from these, you also have the Nexus, Nexus line, which comes from various manufacturers with just stock Android but we're not talking about that now. So what happens over here is once a new update is released for Android, it goes to the manufacturers who spend a few months applying their custom skin on top and then release it, and they release it to their top phones. So say for example, today you have a Galaxy S3, uh, Android 4.2 has been out for quite a few months now, but Samsung is holding back Android 4.2 because they want to release it with their Galaxy S4. They don't want to give it to the Galaxy S3 even before the S4 launches. Again, why? The S3 and the S4 look a lot similar. They've got a lot of similar functionality as well. Yes, the S4 is a better device, but for someone who's just walking into a, a store today to try to pick up a phone, if both are available and both have similar software features, they might tend to go for the cheaper Galaxy S3. It is this few percentage of customers that manufacturers don't want to lose. And that is one of the reasons why they hold back updates. And if you're buying a subsidized phone, say that is carrier, I mean phones from carriers, uh, this update that goes from Google to the manufacturer who applies TouchWiz on top, 
in the case of Samsung, then goes to your uh, network provider, or you, uh, you know, like Verizon or the AT&T or O2, and they add their own apps to it, and then they release it to you, they decide when to release it. So depending on what phones they wanna push, they might hold the update back a few months, or whatever. When you're rooted, you can get around all these. You get different options. There are these things called custom ROMs. So what, what, what are custom ROMs? Custom ROMs are the firmware, the operating system, that has been modified and played around with by different developers that you can download and flash onto your phone. I know I'm throwing in a lot of fancy words here, you know, firmware, operating system, flash it. It's pretty simple. Say you buy a phone with ice cream sandwich on it. The next version of Android is called Jelly Bean. So once Jelly Bean is out, the Nexus devices which ship with stock Android get it first. So at this point, there are developers working on AOSP ROMs. AOSP stands for Android Open Source Project. So these ROMs come without any manufacturer overlay on top. So no sense, no Xperia UI, no touch whiz, just Android the way Google meant it to be. Say for example, the day Jelly Bean released, uh, developers started working on it and within a few weeks, we got an AOSP ROM for the Galaxy S3 or the Galaxy Note 1, all right? Uh, Cyanogen Mod uh, is a very uh, reputed team when it comes to uh, stock Android ROMs. So uh, these ROMs, while they might not have all the features of, say, a fully-fledged uh, TouchWiz-based ROM, uh, they will be giving you the latest version of Android a lot sooner than Samsung Pro possibly could. And again, uh, it, what are the advantages of AOSP ROMs? AOSP ROMs, or just stock Android ROMs, uh, are a few hundred megabytes. Say, for example, again, taking the Galaxy S3, uh, an AOSP ROM can be as uh, small as 250 MB, whereas a touchless based Android ROM uh, for the Galaxy S3 or even the Galaxy Note is about 1 GB. So generally, AOSP or stock Android ROMs are a lot faster, they're cleaner, and they give you a better performance, better battery life, but uh, ROMs with uh, the manufacturer's UI on top, like touchwiz based ROMs or uh, sense-based ROMs, give you a bit of added functionality and uh, a bit more manufacturer-oriented feel to it. So again, it's, it's basically your choice, and that is how I believe it should be, because you've paid for the device, you've paid you know, your hard-earned money for the device, and there's no point in letting someone else dictate what you need to run on your device. So, custom ROMs. Again, uh, just like I mentioned earlier on, when a new device is coming out, a manufacturer or a, or a network provider might hold back an update for an older device. So at this point of time, again, custom ROMs come into the picture. You might get a custom ROM for an unreleased firmware. Say, for example, uh, with the Galaxy Note 1, uh, the Galaxy Note 1 can handle a lot of stuff that the Galaxy Note 2 does, but the Galaxy Note 1 did not get all those features before the Galaxy Note 2 was released. It, didn't, it still hasn't gotten a lot of features that it actually can do. So say for example, with the Galaxy Note 2, you take your S Pen and hover it over the screen and you can see a pointer there. And you will get little snippets of information just like with the mouse over functionality on Windows. This is something that the original Galaxy Note, Galaxy Note 1 can do. But it, is, it still hasn't been provided officially by Samsung. But within a few months of the Galaxy Note 2's release, we had developers who ported over this functionality to the Galaxy Note 1. Again, some features cannot be provided to certain phones because a different manufacturer holds the rights to that technology. Say, for example, the, Mo the uh, Mobile Bravia engine uh, the, uh, from Sony or Beats Audio by HTC. Officially, say you have a Galaxy S3, Samsung could never provide you with Mobile Bravia Engine 2 uh, or uh, Beats Audio for your Galaxy S3 because it's a competitor's technology. But developers are not bound by these restrictions, so you often find custom ROMs that carry Beats Audio or Bravia Engine and so on. So again, these are some more advantages when it comes to custom ROMs. So these are the possible reasons why you could consider flashing a custom ROM. So to flash a custom ROM, you need to have root access, and that is where rooting comes in. So um, again, guys, moving on, what else can rooting do? If you're not into the whole custom ROMs thing, you just, you're happy with whatever OS, whatever updates you receive from your manufacturer, you don't want to really go ahead, flash your phones, that's not your cup of tea, fine, I understand. But still, there are still reasons uh, why you should root your phone. Now, say for example, I just made a video on the top 20 must-have apps 
for people with rooted Android devices. So go ahead, check that out. It's got, there are a lot of things you can do apart from custom ROMs. Say for example, uh, you have a Galaxy Note 2 that came in with a quad-core processor clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. You can overclock it to 1.8 or you can even underclock it to whatever you want. You can do things like backup all your data. Again, when you buy a subsidized phone, say from Verizon or O2 or AT&T, they might, ship, they might provide you the phone with some of their pre-installed apps on it. This is generally called bloatware because these apps are just going to be sitting there taking up space, using up resources. And more often than not, these apps are not uninstallable. That is, you cannot just go into a, uh, applications and un uninstall them the way you would do, uh, the way you would uninstall a normal app. So again, when you have root, uh, root access, there are applications there which will let you uninstall these apps. Another reason why people often root is storage. Well, most apps that you download from the Play Store, especially huge games and so on, install onto your internal memory. Internal memory is often 16 gigs. Uh, and if you want to, you know, if you want a higher variant, say a 32 gig phone or a 64 gig phone of the same phone that you're buying, say the Galaxy S3, a higher end variant is going to cost you at least $100 higher. Whereas you can pick up a 64 gig micro SD card for half the price. So the disadvantage here is that when you download huge games or huge apps, they install onto the internal SD. So once you're internal SD, if you buy a 16 gig phone, you get about 10 gigs of usable, usable storage. When this 10 gigs are over, even if you have a 64, uh, 64 gig micro SD card, you still cannot download any more games on your phone. So again, when you have root access, you don't have to worry about this because there are a lot of workarounds. You can make fool the phone into thinking that the external SD card, the micro SD card, the 64 gig micro SD card that you have is indeed your internal storage and your internal storage of 10 gigs is your external or your micro SD card and fool the uh, phone into actually downloading the apps or games directly onto your micro SD. So apart from these, there are again a lot of things that you can do right from uh, backing up each and every app, transferring data between phones, that is you download uh, a game onto a phone but you have a, you have a tablet, you can just transfer everything to that tablet. Say you've done 30 levels of Angry Birds, you don't have to re-download it on your tablet and, con and play those 30, 30 levels all over. You can just transfer stuff straight to your tablet and pick up with level 31. So if you're interested in routing and if you're interested to see what kind of apps, uh, what kind of functionality that you get when you route your phone, the best 20 apps I have it listed. So check it out. The direct link to that video is there in the description. The next question is what about warranty? Well, with most devices out there, you can go ahead and unroute your phones back to stock and you can send in warranty and claim it. So personally, I've sent in my Asus uh, Nexus 7 for warranty. I've had no issues, multiple times I've sent it in, no issues. I've sent in my uh, Galaxy Note 1. Uh, what else, Samsung? Uh, yeah, my Samsung Galaxy camera that I'm making this video on for warranty, I've had no issues claiming it, even with my HTC One X. The reason I mentioned the HTC, HTC here is, HTC is a little different when it comes to unrooting. On every other device that I mentioned, devices from uh, Samsung, Sony, or Asus, or even LG, you can, um, you can unroute your phone or tablet back to stock with no traces of ever being rooted. But on the HTC, you do leave behind a little bit of a trace, as in uh, when you lock your bootloader again uh, to unroute your phone, instead of going back to the lock state, it shows up as relocked. Okay, this is something that causes people to be, uh, you know, afraid of rooting HTC devices. To simplify stuff, there is a status on HTC devices that, that reads locked initially. When you root it, you have to change it to unlocked. When you unroot it again, instead of going back to locked, it goes to relocked. But this hasn't been an issue, guys, because in India, where we don't have uh, the best customer service personnel, even here, I've been able to claim warranty uh, for my HTC One X, which was on a, which had a bootloader with the relog status. I did not run into any issues, and my unroot tutorial for the HTC One X has close to 100,000 hits today. You go ahead, read the comments. In over 100,000 hits, I've not seen one person report back saying, "I sent my phone in for warranty, and uh, they refused warranty because it had." I mean the bootloader status said relog. So as far as warranty goes, don't even worry about it. Most devices can be unrooted easily. Okay, now comes the most important question. What are my chances of breaking the phone? 
what are my chances of uh, causing permanent damage to the phone? The chances are pretty slim. Most of the times, uh, yeah, you will end up causing some issues to your phone. That's more because you know you didn't read something right, or you haven't, you got, you had a bad download, or something like that. Most of the issues, 99.9% .9 of the issues that might happen can be fixed easily. Because you head on over to XDA developers forums, you literally see hundreds of thousands, I dare say millions of people rooting the devices. So if you run into an issue, odds are someone else has run, run into it before you and you probably have a solution already. So just type in your issue right into Google or search for it on XDA developers forums. I'm sure you will uh, find a, you know, you will find a solution. And most of the issues that happen with regards to rooting your phones or flashing custom ROMs, uh, they can be avoided very easily. So the first thing you need to do is just make sure that you follow any instructions when it comes to flashing a custom ROM. If it says wipe your uh, wipe data or factory reset, do a wipe data. Don't try to just skip that step. You skip any step, more often than not, you're going to get stuck with a boot loop. That is, your phone is not going to boot back up. If you're going to play around with some settings, say for example, play around with the clock speed of your phone, that is, you know, increase your speed or decrease your speed, just go on to a similar thread, just Google it, just search for a similar thread or forum where people are posting about it, just see what kind of uh, values give them the best results. Just go through it, read, for, I mean, read about it, do your research for about 10-15 minutes, that will save you a lot of time and pain. Because getting stuck in a boot loop, facing random crashes, uh, I believe just doing your research for 10-15 minutes is a lot easier than that. And more often than not, that is going to save you a lot of, uh, lot of I mean, that, that's going to prevent a lot of issues from happening. There are rare cases where there are some manufacturer build issues. Say, for example, with the Galaxy Note 1, which had some kernel issues, which caused the phone to uh, uh, break. Uh, these are very, very rare and very far between. Again, just to put things into perspective, there is a higher chance of your phone getting stolen than you causing irreparable damage by rooting it. So, again, I don't have any facts to back it up, but just from what I see, uh, this is just me, this is my uh, point of view. So guys, think about it. You walk into a store, you pick up a brand new Dell laptop, you come home, you turn it on, and you see you can only log into it as a guest, or you can just log into it as a standard user, not as an administrator, you're not going to take it. Then why take it with Android? End of the day, it's my money, I've paid for it. Again guys, you might see a lot of devices on my channel, I'm not big enough to be sent review units. I pay for each and every device that I show on the channel, so I know how difficult it is to pay for it. Believe me, you guys have no idea how many credit cards I'm juggling right now. So, end of the day, it's my money, it's my device, and I feel I should be able to do whatever I want with it. So that's pretty much it guys. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, just go ahead at the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, every time you hit either of those buttons, it increases the odds of YouTube suggesting this video to others. So help me out, hit like, hit subscribe, and if you are interested in rooting, make sure you check out my list of top 20 must-have apps for anybody who owns a rooted device. So once again, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, if you guys have any video requests for me or you just want to stay updated on my uh, latest updates and videos, you can hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. All my contact details are in the description and if you run into any issues, you want any help, you can hit us up at cursefarber.com slash forums. So once again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Till then, it's Ash here from cursefarber.com signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.